What up, what up? All right, so y'all see what's behind me there? That old Staples. We're uh, trying to keep people out of the video here. So we just left Staples. Had to get a couple office supplies. Um, but we're gonna go have a little chat because I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But the pickup truck game is is old. I've always said the hot shot, the pickup thing, like running pickups, it's good starters, you know? It's great, great, great for starters. But no longer a starter, you know? Um, you know, so you've got, as I've told you guys before, when you start in this business, have, oh, I'm in the wife's car, sorry. Have goals. What are your goals in life as a business owner, as an owner operator, as an entrepreneur, whatever it may be? What's the goals? Like, I've, I've had goals. I have goals. Um, and I've met most of them. Even my five year goal is close, you know, to being met. Um, they actually worked a little backwards because my 10-year goal came before my five-year goal. And it was just opportunistic. Opportunistic. And that's what I am. And that's what you have to be in this business. I would call me. Sorry, guys. And everybody else. Um that succeeds in this, you have to be an opportunistic hunter. You know, because you're hunting. You're hunting for your prey. Man, this shot, this truck's got to go in the shop ASAP. Um, so, you, you know, you're always looking for your next golden opportunity. I may be, sorry guys, I, I may, this may be my golden opportunity. This may be the chance to get my five my five year goal in four. Um, you know because it, it, it's almost there. You know, uh, I, I'm like this close, but do I jump over the edge? Do I jump? Well, anybody that knows me knows I'm a jumper. I'm a jumper. Head first. Nose dive. We'll figure it out later. And it works for me. Doesn't work for everybody. It works for me. You know, because I'm willing to do the hard work. I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to suffer. Um, but at this point in life, it's not about my sacrifice, my suffering. It, it ain't about me. Um, it's about the wife and kids at home. And if they could deal with, you know, more sacrifice, which I, I don't think they deserve to, you know. So for me to act like hot shot trucking is where I, sorry, is where I should be and what I should be doing, I'm really just lying to myself. And everybody that is, you know, so. I'm always going to be hot shot Dave, I'm always going to be the car hauler, you know, if if I'm trucking, I'm going to be running a five car, five car, you know, and hot shot Dave ain't just a hot shot truck driver at this point, he's a nutcase, <laughs> so, I don't know what we're going to do, uh, I just got the word yesterday that they finally decided where my truck's gonna go. It's only been a week and a half, um, almost two weeks. Uh, Tuesday will be two weeks since I broke down, I think, something like that. So, uh, it took them that long to figure out where they're even gonna take it to. But now all of a sudden they say it's gonna be done the first week of August, which my mind personally doesn't matter. Um, in all actuality, I, I don't I don't want that. That truck is not good for what I'm doing. 
Um, so that truck will be for sale most likely. Um, and I have another, where I'm leased on to, we have another business opportunity for somebody. Uh, I'll go into another video on that um, probably tomorrow. I'll release it. Uh, but what it is, is it's a brand new truck, brand new trailer, both of them 2019s. You can buy it or you can put money down and lease and lease on with us. Um, you know, we're proven company, proven dispatchers. It ain't our first rodeo, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, we have that. I'll go over the equipment and the truck and all that in another video. Uh, but... So that's for sale. My truck will probably be for sale. Um, I don't know if I'm going to fix Elvira. I don't know if I'm going to get into a new truck, an old truck, a baby truck, a big truck. I don't know. Um, we're, we're just going to have to wait and see which way the wind goes. Because that's what Hot Shot does. I just go with the wind, baby. Go with the wind. Um... Now lately, I've been hearing a lot of people, um, I've been getting a lot of phone calls and stuff from people that made a decision, like they'll call, ask for advice, you know what I mean, I give it to them, which it's not always right and wrong, I, I get it, there, there's no right or wrong information or advice or none of that, but if you've got someone with experience, you know what I mean, telling you something and you don't listen, that's fine, that's your prerogative, because I don't listen to everybody that has experience. Uh, there's a lot of people that call me just to say I'm wrong and they're right. When I make a decision, I, I don't care. You know what I mean? You don't have to live in my shoes. But they've been calling me, asking me how to get out of the problem they got into. And there, there's been like four or five of them. Uh, what, which is fine, you know, one of them, I completely understood why he did what he did. I ain't mad at him. Ain't mad at him, you know. Um, nor am I talking smack about him. You know, he he was in a situation and he had an opportunity to make money and he did it. Um, so, it, it, it's just, you've got to be slow. Methodical. Take your time. You know, don't, don't look at just the money. Because... The money's nice, but if the idea is a bad idea and the fruits don't fall off the tree, then the fruit never matter. Oh, I can get $100,000 out of this gig, right? But if that tree never blossoms and you put twenty in, you would have been better off taking a $50,000 deal that you knew more about or you knew a better deal. You know, so just, just be careful. And I see a lot of guys right now, they're kicking the door in, kicking it in, kicking it in, kicking it in. And then they're getting pushed back out. Of it. You know, um, this business will knock you on your patoot. You know, I, I'm living proof. It does not matter what you do equipment wise, it don't matter. They all all break they all break they're all junk they can be you know what I mean not taken care of properly some of them are just betas oh we don't want to pay for research and design research and development now let's just make it send it out there as a glorious truck and watch what happens and at 40,000 miles, you got guys like Hot Shot Dave. Boom. I know a guy right now, 80,000 miles, they're putting his third motor in. Third motor. Now his is CP4 failure. Which, in my opinion, Chrysler should pay for all those, all those CP4s. They need to take them off them trucks. They knew that CP4 was a problem. But yet they say, oh no, we redesigned it. Okay, you redesigned the motor too. Um, you know, my, right now how I feel, 
is Ram is living off the Cummins name, right? Reputation. Well, Cummins is living off the 12 valve and the 5.9 reputation. So, what happens when they all end? You're stuck with a truck that is living off a reputation that it doesn't deserve and who pays in the end? Me and you. So it doesn't matter if you buy old, doesn't matter if you buy new, doesn't matter if you buy lightly pre-owned, doesn't matter if you buy an antique. They're all gonna break, right? So where am I at at this point of my noodling? I went noodling. So if they're all gonna break, Everything's going to break. They're all going to need repaired. So what do we do? I'll tell you what I think we do. We buy the truck that has the most available parts, which my 5500 did not. Didn't have the best. It was hard to find parts. So if we get another truck, it's got to, parts got to be available. Okay. You buy a proven platform. So you got a proven platform with the availability of parts, right? That is the least inexpensive for quality work. If you can get a reman engine for 16 grand in a big truck, that's good. You can get a reman engine in a pickup truck, 6,500, that's good. But what do you do? You, you got to pick what you're willing to repair and you're willing to stay in. Because the money loss here comes in the switching, the swapping. Like that, that ramp, I'm going to lose like 11 G's. I'm going to lose $11,000. Put five grand down. Paid on it since February. Luckily, I bought it correctly. You know? bought it correctly and uh, I can get out of it now that 11 G's doesn't even count what's on the bed that doesn't count the toolboxes the fuel tanks the fifth wheel doesn't count all that that's not even in the 11 G's um, so I'll probably sell that like it is with a new motor um, you know for right around 50 52 you know so if you're interested let me know now I think the problem is these trucks are sold to be able to handle a 42, 43, 44 GCWR. It, it can't do it day in and day out. Now if you're throwing 34 behind on the back, I think you're good. I think you're gold. If uh, figure out now I haven't had CP4 failure, so. Um, that's just me, but that's what I think you would do, you know, is buy least expensive to maintain and rebuild and go from there. You know, now oh, when I say least expensive, I don't te technically mean only the least expensive. I mean, in the big picture, least expensive. So, if I'm buying a truck, and the brakes and the tires, they go 100, 200,000 miles. It may cost a little more, but they go a lot longer, okay? So, which is cheaper? The one that costs a little more, or the one that's physically cheaper? The one that costs a little more is probably cheaper. Talk about downtime. Talk about downtime. You know, and, and people are saying, well, hot shot, you don't have to, you don't have to pay out of pocket for your motor right now. No, but you know what? I should have fixed Elvira the first time with a 6,500 bucks. That's what I should have done. That's what I should have done. But, I made a decision, you know what I mean? So, would you rather spend $6,500 for a 
to fix your truck and get back on the road in a week or so? Or would you rather take a month off? Month and a half. Whatever it's going to take. And not spend no money. If I'm making 18 G's to 20 grand gross. Now mind you. Insurance needs paid. Um, truck payment needs paid. House bills need paid. Still paying that. So this truck is costing me money. It's actually costing me more money than an older truck. Because of the downtime money. So, you know, I got a lot of stuff going around in my mind right now. What I'm going to do, what I'm going to do. Talking to some good people in my life. You got to have good people, bro. Got to have good peoples. Not all y'all. But I'll tell you what, man. What y'all did when I broke down... Mad respect for you. So many people ran out and brushed me. There were even people that physically couldn't help me were willing to come. Mm, that's a gorgeous old truck there. You know, I had people from Florida willing to drive up just to be with me and help me where they can. They didn't have a fifth wheel. I mean, they couldn't physically help me. But they were willing to come there and help me if they could physically. You know what I mean? If I needed to drive cars around or if I needed to lift that or lift this or whatever I needed to do, they were willing to come. And five trucks come out to me along the road. Five trucks. Y'all don't know me from a can of paint. There is still good people and brotherhood in this, in this industry. But let me tell you something. This world has changed. You must start the process of the brotherhood. You have to start it. So if you do good, good will come back. And I know that's backwards. And I know it shouldn't be that way. But guess what? This world and trust isn't what it used to be. You know, so you just gotta, just gotta kind of go with the flow, you know? But, all right, man, I got to pull up in here. I'm going to talk to my boy. We'll uh, probably be right back. I'll finish this video in a minute. Alan. All right. So I got that done good, squared away. Um, so we're going to make a decision this week. You know, we'll see what happens. Now, obviously, I keep going in the loop, but stay on your grind, man. Remember. This move is never your final move. The only thing constant in life is change, and you've got to be ready. Oh, you got to be ready. Because if you ain't ready, it may be your last move in a successful game of chess. You know what I mean? You may have to go back to checkers. So, that, that's just a little update, a little mindset, a little rant where I'm at with it. Um... It'd be nice to be home with the family. I think they're right. Kick me out. You know what I mean? Because when when you work like we work and, and you're gone and you know what I mean, you do your thing. The the family gets their own schedule. You know what I mean? They get their own little thing going on. And and when daddy comes home or mommy comes home, whoever the trucker is, you know it's it's not the same. You, you, you throw a little wrench in it. Now, I, I know my wife kids love me to death. They love me being home. I get it. But daddy's a little stricter, you know? And it just throws a little wrench in their normal gig. So we'll, uh, we're going to be here till we leave and we'll just make a new plan. So, all right, guys, that's that. Guy got any questions, comment, concern, holler boy, hotshot wedge at gmail. Um, again, you can get the consultations on the on the website, hotshotdave.com. You got, you got consultations, you got the mentors, you got, I think I even got some of my gear up there. Um, if not, you can go to Teespring, look up Hotshot Dave. It's in there. It's in there, baby. Get that hotshot gear. So, we'll, uh, now we're headed back to the house and gonna do what we do but uh 
don't know guys see where we go from here like share subscribe hit that ding ding and i will see you tomorrow peace